Welcome back. Summertime and the living is easy, but not for the people who run your power grid. When a heat wave flattens the East Coast, that's when all of their training and skills are put to the test. Margaret Ryan reports. It's a summer afternoon. Your house is heating up and you think, I'll turn on the air conditioning. You probably don't think, will it come on? And here, deep in a bunker near Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, is the reason you don't. This is the dispatch center for the PJM Power Grid, where operators take power from more than 1,200 generating facilities and send it to 51 million consumers across 13 states and the District of Columbia, from North Carolina to New York, from Chicago to the Atlantic. It's a delicate dance, because how much electricity they put into the system has to balance with how much you take out. Every time somebody turns on a light switch or, or turns on a dishwasher, uh, we're either increasing energy to meet that uh, demand or decreasing it as you, as you shut them down. When record heat waves hit our region, as they have this year, PJM operators have their hands full. Shift Supervisor Joe Siabatoni and his team prepare each day with a series of conference calls with generators and transmission companies. We forecast the load, so even though we're not uh, absolutely sure what you're going to do, we have a pretty good idea of what you're going to do based on weather patterns. PJMs. And then more calls as the temperature rises. On a minute-to-minute -minute basis, uh, we have uh, about eight control room operators who will talk to the individual generators and the individual transmission companies and coordinate outages, um, movement of generation, and things like that. Generators bid power from their plants a day ahead, and PJM takes the cheapest power first. But the power travels on transmission lines, and that's the bottleneck. There's more generation to the west than there is transmission to carry it east to the big cities. On high heat days, operators may forego cheaper power to keep transmission lines from overheating and failing. We'll actually load more expensive energy and back off the cheaper energy, and then that allows us to maintain the power balance. PJM members are building more lines, but Siabatoni says there's art as well as science to keeping the grid in balance, with each team member developing not just technical expertise, but a feel for how the grid's reacting. There's a somewhat of a progression through the control room. So you start out in the capacity of, a, of scheduling, and then you would move on to be a generation dispatcher, and then eventually to a, a power director. The grid must be staffed 24-7, so operating teams rotate shifts over a six-week period, which always includes a week of training in classrooms and in a simulator that mimics the control room. We also have a uh, quite sophisticated uh, simulator where uh, our training department will run us through scenarios. They'll do anything from uh, take a large unit out of service or have a series of transmission facilities come out of service, and then we'll actually work through that scenario. And when these summer scorchers hit, what's it like working in the PJM dispatch center? On a hot day, we get to a point where we've done everything we could do. Um, so, so the real stressful part of it is, is really you're, you're sitting there waiting for the next event to happen, for the next piece of equipment to fail or the next unit to trip offline. And then uh, we basically come up with contingency plans of how we would respond to that. So really sometimes it's, it's a, a waiting game of, of seeing what's going to happen next. This year, the highest demand PJM has had to meet was just under 136,700 megawatts on July 6th. The record ever, over 144,000 megawatts in August 2006. And any August day, it could happen again. In Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, Margaret Ryan, Clean Skies News. And PJM officials tell us to get more of that cheaper electricity to the cities. Utilities plan to spend about $15 billion on transmission lines in the next five years.